Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker and in this video we're going to take a look at a shortcut into calculating the OSPF wildcard mask. Now if you are brand new to OSPF or wildcard bits or subnetting, check out my other content on YouTube. But for this video I'd like to give you a quick shortcut that always works when calculating the wildcard mask for OSPF. So let's begin with the first scenario right here. And this is when we have a network that is on an even boundary. So in an IPv4 address, we've got four octets. The first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. And if we have a mask that evenly divides it either here or here or here, that's an example of an even boundary. So in the case of this dividing line, that'd be a slash 8. This would be a slash 16. And this would be an example of a slash 24. So a network like 10.0.0.0 with a slash 16 would be an example of a network, the 10.0 network, which has the dividing line cleanly between two octets, in this case, between the second and the third octet right here. Or if we had the network 10.0.0.0 with a 24-bit mask, that again is an example of a nice clean break between the first, second, and third octets and the fourth octet. So let's take this one right here as an example. If we had this network 10.0.0 and it had a 24-bit mask in dotted decimal, the mask would look something like this, 255.255.255.0. And to create the wildcard mask, when we have a nice, even, clean boundary like that, you simply flip this number. So wherever there's a 255, you put a zero. So the first octet's gonna be a zero for the wildcard mask, the second octet's a zero, the third octet's a zero, and the last octet we're also gonna flip, which makes it 255. So nice, clean boundaries, no problem. Just go ahead and follow the rule of flipping the subnet mask to create the OSPF wildcard mask for that specific network. And again, for the syntax for implementing this and configuring it, check out my other OSPF videos. So this is the one right here, the wildcard mask, and just flipping it, that's pretty easy to do if we have nice clean boundaries. Now in contrast to just inverting the existing subnet mask, if we have a network where the actual network portion ends in the middle of an existing octet, here we have the first octet, the second octet, the third octet, and the fourth octet. I'll go ahead and label them here, one, two, three, and four. When we have a mask like a slash 15, or a slash 22, or a slash 28, and I'll put the decimal equivalents here on the right, the decimal equivalent would look like this for these masks. And I just wrote a little cheat sheet here at the top just to help make sure that my numbers are here correct for the dotted decimal representation of those network masks. So these three examples, a slash 15, a slash 22, and a slash 28 are all great examples of where we have the mask ending on a non-even boundary. So when we have networks like that, what we're gonna do is the first step here is to identify the octet where that mask ends. Is it the first octet, second octet, third octet, or fourth octet? So regarding which octet the network portion ends in, I'll go ahead and label this end right here. And for a slash 15, that's in the second octet. A slash 22 is in the third octet. And a slash 28 is in the fourth octet. And again, if you're brand new to IPv4 addressing and subnetting, check out my other videos here on YouTube for IP addressing, including Subnet Saturdays, which will make you a master of it after just those 12 sessions. So after we ID the octet where it ends, which we just did, second, third, or fourth octet in these examples, the next step is just go ahead and flip or invert the subnet mask for anything before or after those octets. And here's what I mean by that. For the slash 15, the first octet, if it's a 255, we'd have a zero. Because the mask ends in that second octet, we'll put a question mark there for that second octet. And then everything after that, we'll go ahead and flip those as well. And the same thing for the slash 22. Because the network is ending somewhere in the third octet, we'll take everything before or after that octet and flip it. So in the case of the slash 22, we had 255, 255. So that'd be a 0, 0.0 dot and a question mark in that third octet. And then we're going to flip that final octet over to a 255. And then for the slash 28, because the dividing line is somewhere in the fourth octet, we're going to flip the first three octets, the pre-stuff, which is now going to be 0, 0.0.0. .0, .0. And then we need a value for that last octet to represent the wildcard bits for that last octet. So again, for a non-octet boundary, identify where the mask ends. Is it the first octet, second octet, third octet, or fourth octet? And then flip the pre and post octets. Each of those decimal numbers represents eight bits. And that's why they're often referred to as octets. So once we've done the flip for the pre and post octets, our last piece is to figure out, okay, what the heck is the value going to be for that octet where we have the dividing line between the network on the left and the host on the right. And the shortcut to calculating that value for that octet and the shortcut to identify that value right here is to identify the block size, which we've covered in our Subnet Saturdays for each one of those networks. And let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'll go ahead and put block size right here. So for the slash 15, we have eight bits over here on the left. And in the second octet, we just keep on counting. So we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The block size would be a two for a slash 15. For a slash 22, we're now working in the third octet. So we start here at 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And that would be a block size of four. And for a slash 28, 
it'd be in the fourth octet. So we are at 24 bits right here, 25, 26, 27, 28. That would be a block size of 16. And here's the shortcut. All we're gonna do is take the block size for that given network and subtract one, and that's it. So for here, this in this octet, we'd have a one there, and that would be the wildcard mask for a slash 15. And for the slash 22, because the block size is four, we simply subtract one from that, that'd be a three, and that would be our wildcard mask for a slash 22. And for the slash 28, because the block size is 16, we'd go ahead and subtract one from that, make that a 15, and that would be our wildcard mask for a slash 28. So my goal here was to share with you a quick and easy way of doing a shortcut when you do have those network masks which do not end on a clean octet boundary. So I hope this is helpful and I'll see you my friend in another video or live event soon. Until then, be well, be happy, and keep on studying. Bye for now.